Word of God. So today, as we open up today's service, thank you ladies, you did a wonderful, wonderful job. Okay, in a... Uh, it's time to get into the Word of God. So let's just go before the Lord in prayer and ask His blessings upon the Word. Father, we thank You once again that we can study Your Word to show ourselves approved unto You, Father, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. So, Father, we ask You to bless this Word, minister to us in a special way, and we invite the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today's lesson is going to be titled that... They will know you by your fruits. And the fruits in the Bible, Jesus talked about them very, very, very many times, didn't he? And he wanted to make sure that we had fruit because he said that he is the vine and we are the branches. And together, we bear much fruit. So it's very, very important to Jesus that we bear fruit. Now we have to focus on, on what Jesus was saying because we're going to start out in the seventh chapter of Matthew, starting with the 20th verse. And the 20th verse said, Jesus is talking, and I like to tell everybody that uh, when you see the red letters in the Bible, and for page after page after page, there's nothing but red letters in my Bible, red words, uh, if the red type, meaning that Jesus was teaching us what he wanted us to know. Now, you have to understand that Jesus came down from heaven to teach us the word of God, didn't he? That Jesus left the throne, came down to earth because he loved us so much. So it must be important for Jesus to, uh, to teach us about the fruits um, so that we can have fruit on our, on our limbs so that uh, we can glorify our Father in heaven. So in Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, it says, Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Like I just said a minute ago, now Jesus was teaching, that he probably, this was part of the Beatitudes, and it just keeps continuing. And, and the Bible says that sometimes Jesus taught two or three days in a row, and he just kept teaching the people the word of God. And he was teaching them how to get along. He was teaching them how to love their enemies. He was teaching them how to pray. He was teaching them how to trust in the Lord. Jesus was trying to teach the people everything he could teach them because he knew he only had a short little window, didn't he? He had about three and a half years to teach and preach and to teach the people what God Almighty wanted him to do. And part of his teaching was in Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So it's very, very important that we understand that you've got to seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added unto us. And that's where the fruit begins to come onto our, our branches and we begin, begin to bear fruit for, for Jesus. So let's go, um, like I say, we're going to go into a set of scriptures here where Jesus is talking because he said in the verse 20, wherefore you by, you, he said, wherefore by their fruit you shall know them. Verse 21 says, Now Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. See, this is such a very, very, very important message that Jesus is teaching us. He said that not everybody that cries, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, when you look, when you read back into the back of the Bible, the very last chapter, the very last book of the Bible is Revelation. And when you get in around the 21st chapter of Revelation, it talks about the new heaven and the new earth. It talks about the new Jerusalem. And Jesus goes on and on and on and talks about this new heaven and a new earth because this old earth is going to be done away with, isn't it? It's going to be completely made brand new. So the important thing is we have to understand that our goal is to spend eternity with Jesus, isn't it? Our goal is to get to heaven and, and live with Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever and ever. So Jesus said that not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, 
is going to be able to enter into this kingdom. Only those that do the will of my Father. Well, as verse 20 says, wherefore you will know them by their fruits, it must mean that God Almighty is looking for fruit to be in our lives, isn't it? So we have to understand that the will of the Father is that we have fruit. Now, that's love, joy, peace. It's the nine manifestations of the gift of the fruits of the Spirit, isn't it? Love, joy, peace, goodness, mercy, or I'm sorry, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, faith. All nine of them have to be in our lives, doesn't it? And these, in this fruit is that we love, that's what Jesus is teaching us here in Matthew, that we must love one another. We must love our enemies. We must love those who persecute us. We must love, 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 to shoot me. And that's what the fruits of the Spirit are given to us so that we can share the love of God with mankind, didn't it? Jesus said that there's two commandments we got to follow. He said that you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. So we know that if we do those two commandments, that we will be doing the will of our Father, won't we? But in, in, in a, along with the doing the two commandments, we still have to have the nine gifts of the Spirit, or nine fruits of the Spirit in our life. We must have this fruit. Now, and that says that Jesus said, He that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 22 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Well, the reason Jesus gave us the whole Bible to learn is because if when you study the Word of God, you'll find out that the Corinthian church, most of those folks had just gotten saved, but they were brand new converts, and they moved in the gifts of the Spirit, and one of the gifts that they was given was prophecy. So you don't have to be a mature Christian to prophesy, do you? You don't have to be a mature Christian to cast out devils. You don't have to be a mature Christian to help at the church as a, a janitor or a maintenance person or a nursery worker. You don't have to be very mature to do the work of the ministry. But Jesus said that just because you did those things, maybe when you were first starting out or maybe whatever you, you did there, uh, you know, the Bible says that these, that these gifts here can flow when you're very, very carnally. But yet the Bible says to be carnally minded is wrong, isn't it? And to be carnally minded means to be fleshly minded. To be, to be more concerned about the things of the flesh, to be more concerned about the things of your flesh than the things of God. And if you're a carnal Christian, the Bible says you're going to be very, very miserable because you don't have your flesh crucified. So Jesus is saying... Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out devils, and done many mighty things? And Jesus said in the verse 23, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. But remember what I've, what I've tried to teach you in the past is that Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me. Well, I've tried to teach everyone that it's very important that we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, isn't it? Every second of the day, you should be conscious that Jesus Christ lives inside of you, that the power of God, the Holy Spirit, lives inside of us, doesn't he? And that's what Jesus is saying. He said, depart from me, I never knew you. That's why it's so important to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to have fellowship with him. You have to go into your prayer closet and like Jesus said, close the door and pray to him and, and, and have fellowship with him. And it produces that, that environment that Jesus knows you. The question is, does Jesus know your name? Now, Jesus knows everybody's name, doesn't he? But does he call you friend? Are you his personal friend? Everywhere you go, do you take Jesus with you? I got <clears throat> a little bit of a funny story. 
I guess it's funny. It's funny now, but it wasn't funny when it happened. Because this past week on Friday evening, around 6 o'clock, and my daughter's laughing now. She thinks it's hysterical. And uh, around 6 o'clock in the evening, I, w I had been out all day. It was raining, and it was damp and weary. And I came in the house, and I don't usually take my shoes off to get out in the basement. But for some reason, I took took my shoes off, and I'm, I'm in stock and feet, and we have a wood-burning stove in the basement, so I was going to go down and fire the wood stove and do different chores that I have to do during the day, but I started down the steps, and I was at the very top step, and for some reason, my feet kicked out from underneath me, I was as in the, and my feet literally went higher than my head, and my backside went down on the top step and somehow I fell so hard that it propelled me forward, right? Now I'm at the top of the stairs and I'm going down head first. And you know, you can play this back in your mind in slow motion, but you can imagine yourself at the top of a stairway being propelled head first down this step. Well now, I do remember my head hitting the the steps. I remember my arms. My my arms still got a little bit of a bruise there, and um, and I remember laying at the bottom of the steps, and I remember I remember yelling uh, Jennifer and Levi, and they was they was all upstairs. I remember yelling for Jen and Levi to come, and I'm laying at the bottom of the step, and I don't know if I'm okay or not, but I know what came out of my mouth. Jesus came out of my mouth. The name of Jesus immediately started coming out of my mouth. I said, thank you, Lord, that I'm okay. Thank you, Lord, that there's nothing wrong with, that I didn't break any bones and, and that I'm all right. Because I don't know how much you, you, you listen, but I, I've lost a good friend years ago who fell down. He had just retired and he fell down his basement steps. And of all things, he, he died from the uh, injuries that he sustained from that. <clears throat> so, of course, that... That goes through your mind when you're thinking about it. as you're falling down these steps, you're thinking, well, am I going to break my neck? Am I going to break my back? Am I going to break a leg or something like that? But I thank God that I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because as you're, as you're falling, you're thinking, Jesus, you're crying out to the name of Jesus, aren't we? And it's very important that, that we know the name of Jesus. Isn't it? But I, I, a long story short, I, uh, I jumped up off the basement floor and I think by that time, Levi was there and, and uh, different family members uh, came to see if I was okay. And, and, I, and I jumped up and I said, I'm, o I'm okay, I'm all right. I, I, I got up, but I immediately prayed for my body, immediately. I took authority over every situation, over anything that could be possibly wrong with my body. And I prayed for total healing at that time. And I thank God that he was with me. But you see how important it is that you spend time in your prayer closet because you could be going down the road on your motorcycle, in your car, anything at all can happen. You don't know when a deer is going to jump out if you're on a motorcycle. You don't know when a car is going to pull out in front of you. You don't know what's around the corner, do you? And so many times we ask questions like, well, Lord, if you knew this was going to happen, why do you, why do you want me? But most of the time, it's because like Friday evening, I was kind of rushing around. I had a lot to get done and, and uh, different things that was, what was going on. And uh, I was rushing around. So the Lord tries to tell us to, to take our time and to uh, be safe with everything we do. But sometimes we get rambunctious and, and then, then things happen. But, uh, but I can remember a couple, well, it's been more than a couple of years ago. It's probably been quite a while ago now. But I have a, a, a tractor at my house, it's a John Deere, and it has a big loader on the front of it, and the main arm broke on that loader. And I had to weld it, so I had to like heat it cherry red in order to weld it. And of all things, when I got off the tractor, I got down, I got my welding tools, and I got my helmet on and everything, and I wasn't paying attention, and I reached up and grabbed that red hot beam. And I burnt, it just sounded like a steak. Whenever you throw a steak into a frying pan, it just sounded like a steak sizzling when my hand hit that thing. And I knew that I had like a major burn on my hand. But I had to get this tractor welded. So 
I went in the garage and I got a great big rubber glove and put on it and I took masking tape and I taped all around this glove. By the time I got, and of course I prayed for it. I said, I thank you, Jesus, for your healing power, you know, that you died for my sins, you died for my transgressions, you died for everything that I have need of. So I, this glove I had on my hand and I went ahead and welded that piece while it was good and hot and I got it all welded, and that's probably been, like I say, many, many years ago now, and it still hasn't broke, so thank God that he trained me enough to be a welder, but my hand, that glove, <clears throat> filled up with water. I don't know where the water came from, but usually a burn, you get a lot of liquid out of a burn, but that glove, the fingers and everything, had filled up with water, and, uh, and it was taped off so the water couldn't get out of there, and I thought, hmm, that hand don't hurt. If there's no pain to it, I'm just going to let the glove on. So I left the glove on for like four, five, six hours. I forget how long it was now. But when I finally took that glove off of my hand and dumped all that water out, my hand was like snow white from being in all that moisture. My hand was totally 100% healed. And I thank God that, that no matter what we do, if we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, he knows what we have need of, doesn't he? He knows everything about us, and he's always there to even, even whenever we do silly, stupid things like touch hot metal, the Holy Spirit can see us through that. He's always there to help us out, to show us the way, to, to, to let us know that that personal relationship with him. And that's why Jesus said in the 23rd verse, he said, and then I will profess you that I never knew you. The question is, we have to ask ourselves is, do we know Jesus in a personal way? Does he know us as his friend? And it's so very important. Now, Levi could probably come up here and tell us a story because Levi was out deer hunting this, this, this week, and I think it was Thursday evening. He got up on his tree stand, and uh, he is so blessed that he, uh, he managed to save, save some of his money, and he's been saving up, and he wanted to buy a new deer rifle, so him and his mommy and myself, we went out to get to Levi a new deer rifle. And like I say, it, it was on sale because it was that Black Friday week. So Levi got this brand new, it's called a 350 Legend. It's actually a 35 millimeter gun and has a nice scope. And, and we're bragging on Jesus because Jesus knows Levi's heart. And Jesus always, always, always is there for us no matter what we have need of. So this gun was so special because the guy that sold it to it, he told us that that gun, his, his six-year-old daughter has the exact gun, and she's just a little bitty girl. And the thing about Levi, he's only nine years old, so he can't shoot one of these big high-powered rifles because they'll, they'll bruise his shoulder and, and, and maybe the scope will come back and hit him in the eye. But long story short, Levi got blessed because this, we just happened to get to the right salesman who had a six-year-old who shoots this 350 Legend, and there's no recoil when, when the gun goes off. You can barely hear it. It's just designed for, for younger kids. So Levi <clears throat> was out Thursday evening, and he was up on his tree stand, and two of these little bitty baby deer come up to him, and he knew that they were too small to shoot, and we watched them for a while, and they went out in the field, and then they came right back into Levi, didn't they, Levi? And they was right underneath Levi's tree stand. And no matter what we would do, these little guys wouldn't leave. And it was just about getting dark. So we had to make a decision whether we was going to wait and get a big one or was we going to go ahead and shoot one of these little ones. Well, Levi made the right decision because with his patience and his trusting in Jesus all the time, sure enough, down the woods, another, another deer had stepped out from behind a pine tree and that was the one that Levi got on Thursday evening. So Levi was blessed with his deer this year. And he was very, 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 very thankful for everything that Jesus does. Because Levi trusts trust in Jesus for everything. And that's what the Bible's saying here, that we have to have a friend in Jesus. That, that Jesus has to know us in that special way. But you know, there's so many churches that are teaching us that if we pray a prayer, if you pray the sinner's prayer, that that's all you have to do. You're saved. And, you know, I want to make sure that, that everybody that's listening, that everybody that studies their Bible knows that you have to do more 
than just prayer prayer. You can't just ask Jesus to come into your heart. Everybody that reads the Bible knows that Jesus went to the cross, paid a debt that he didn't owe. He died for our sins, our sicknesses, our diseases. He died that if we ask him to come into our heart, he comes into our heart and he lives in, in, and abides inside of us. But <clears throat> that's the very beginning of our journey with our brand new friend named Jesus, isn't it? But the churches are teaching you that if you pray a prayer, you're saved. You're eternally saved. Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But here Jesus is saying, what is Jesus saying? That not everybody that cries, Lord, Lord, is going to be entered into that new kingdom. Only those that do the will of our Father. So I want to make sure that we know that as you... As we study the Word of God, no matter where you turn in the teachings of Jesus, how many remember the parable of the sower in the fourth chapter of Mark, right? The seed was planted, and uh, the Bible says that in that soil, that the devil immediately stole that seed from the earth. He immediately, the Bible says that the devil stole it immediately. Well, the second set of seeds were sowed, and the Bible says that persecution and, a, and affliction and that seed, it says, fell upon stony soil and it produced nothing. So that's two seeds that were sowed in people's hearts who heard the word of God and there was no fruit. Remember, Jesus said we have to have fruit. Well, the first seed was sowed. It produced no fruit. The second seed was, was sowed on stony ground and immediately it produced no fruit. Well, the third seed, the Bible says, Jesus said was sowed. And Jesus is looking for fruit from this seed, isn't he? Because the word of God is the seed. He's looking for fruit in our lives. And what happened to the third one? The Bible says that the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things choked out the word. And once again, it didn't produce any fruit. So there's three different types of seeds that Jesus sowed, giving us the word of God, and it produced zero fruit. What did Jesus say? Only those that do the will of my father. Jesus said, I'm going to say to them, Depart from me, because I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. So you see, even though we hear the word of God, if we don't do the word of God, it produces zero fruit. And Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Now the fourth seed, when it was sowed, what happened? The Bible says that it produced, didn't it? It produced fruit. To ever, towards everlasting life. It produced fruit, and it glorified our Father which is in heaven. You know, one time the disciples came up to Jesus. Jesus was, he was on one of his two or three day adventures where Jesus was teaching the word of God and teaching the people to love one another and to love their enemies. And the disciples come up to Jesus. It's actually found in Matthew, the 19th chapter, the 26th verse. The disciples said to Jesus, they said, how can any man be saved? There is so much we have to do. We have to trust in you. We have to have faith. We have to believe in you. We have to have a relationship. The disciples said, Lord, how can anybody be saved? Does anybody remember what Jesus said? He said, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With God, it's possible that we can produce fruit. Isn't it? With God Almighty living inside of us, the power of the, of the name of Jesus going forth and we pray and we ask God and we talk to God and we seek him and we study the word and we meditate on the word and we memorize the word, we can produce fruit, can't we? Because Jesus said, with man it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. You know, um, as the, uh, as the disciples, they, 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 they had, I'm sure they had lots of fun with Jesus because every time they had a question, you know, they, they, they would go to Jesus and Jesus would just blow them right out of the water, wouldn't he? Because he would just 
put the word of God out there, and the disciples are out there casting out the de devils and demons. This is this is actually found in Luke the twentieth verse. The, I'm sorry, Luke chapter ten, the twentieth verse. The disciples are casting out devils and they're laying hands on the sick and people are getting healed and they're they're just seeing all types of miracles happening. And the disciples come back to Jesus all full of joy and happiness. And, and they were so excited. They said, Jesus, we can't believe that even the devils are subject. And what did Jesus say? He said, don't rejoice that the devils are subject to my name, but glorify God that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So Jesus always wanted to point him towards heaven, didn't he? He said, look. It's wonderful that you're doing the work of the ministry, but the important thing is that you have a relationship with God Almighty that leads you to everlasting life. And that's, like I say, that's found in Luke chapter 10, the 20th verse. Rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And Jesus said, you get, you get to go to heaven because of your fruits. Jesus said in the 20th verse, whereby by their fruits you shall know them. So we're going to jump down to verse 24 here. And now Jesus is going to show you where the tire meets the road because now he's told you that you've got to have fruit. He said, if you don't have fruit, he said, I'm going to tell you to depart from me because I never knew you. Now you've got to remember the love of God is always there to help you. The love of God is always there to strengthen you, to be with you, to guide you, to lead you. God loves us that much that he wants to have a relationship with us, doesn't he? But it's up to us to produce the habitation for him. It's up to us to live the holy life. Because you see, Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Can Jesus live in an unclean heart? Is Jesus going to abide where there's iniquity? And we're going to talk about iniquity in a, in, a, in a couple of minutes because iniquity is a very, very bad thing because it's willfully sinning. It's knowing that it's wrong and you do it anyway. It's willfully, when you know you belong in church, to study the Word of God as, with the body of Christ and you make up your mind, you're just not going to go. That's iniquity. That's sin. That's called willful disobedience to the Holy Spirit. So, in the 24th, 24th verse, pay close attention to what Jesus said because now he's going to explain why he has to tell them that they can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Verse 24 says, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and do doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. If you hear the word of God and do what God Almighty says, God says he will liken you unto a wise man. So it's very important that we hear. Verse 25 says, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. Does anybody know who the rock is? His name is Jesus, isn't it? If your life is based upon the rock, and you fall down the steps head first, you're probably going to be okay because your life is based upon the rock of Jesus Christ. Verse 26 says, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And when the rain came, the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Does anybody know what Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31 says? 1031 says, It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the Almighty God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an Almighty God. And Jesus said that the man that built his house upon the sand, when the winds came and beat upon the house, great was the fall of it. Does anybody know what happens to anybody who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Who don't have Jesus as their, as their personal Savior? Who don't spend time with Jesus? Who don't pray? Who don't worship God Almighty? The Bible says that great will be their fall. They're going to be eternally separated from God. So it's you and my job 
to have fruit in our lives, to have love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, patience, long-suffering, faith. It's your and my job to have all these fruit so that we can say to others, look, Jesus lives inside of us. Look what Jesus has done for me. See, we overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus forgave us of our sins and the word of our testimony. See, we always share testimonies in this service because we want other people to know that Jesus is part of our lives, isn't he? And no matter what happens, Alicia could probably come up here and tell us all kinds of wonderful stories, couldn't you, Alicia? She has all these testimonies, and she could just tell you how she lets her light shine every day. When she goes to Perkins to work, she lets her light shine so that everybody knows that Jesus lives inside of her. These children love whenever you, whenever you talk about them in service because they know that this message is going out across the whole wide world, and everybody knows Alicia now. So that's the, that's the fun of this, of this time here because this is broadcasted on the uh, World Wide Web. So everybody gets to uh, know what we're doing. But anyway, great was their fall, and we don't want to see anybody go to, go to a place eternally separated from Jesus, do we? So Jesus said he's going to know us by our, by our fruit. So what, what, what's to happen if we don't do the word? Jesus said, great is going to be your fall. And it's just interesting, what would happen if you fell down the steps head first and you didn't know Jesus? You don't know. That very well could be the last day, like my friend who fell down his steps right after he retired. He never got a chance to really enjoy his retirement, and uh, it's, a, it's a very dreadful thing. But let's, um, let's talk about that word iniquity a little bit, because Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. See, to... to Willfully disobey God is wrong. And the word iniquity means to be immoral, a grossly unfair behavior, wickedness, sinfulness, ungodliness, wrongdoings. And it's a willful, willful act of saying, I don't care. Well, you know, so many of the preachers, we're hearing end time messages now about the tribulation coming soon. And you'll hear end time preachers, and this is why it's so important that everybody studies the word of God so that you know, because these, some of these preachers are preaching that the world, that, that Jesus can't have the tribulation start yet because there's no temple in Israel. So basically what they're saying is, well, you don't have to worry about the tribulation. You'll have time whenever they build this temple in, in, in Israel then uh, you, maybe you better start paying more attention to God. But I'm here to tell you that if you study your Bible, you'll come to find out that Jesus said he's returning in the twinkling of an eye. He said you're going to be caught up in the sky with Jesus because that's what's referred to as the rapture. And the rapture and this tribulation, even though they, 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 they work together, they are two separate things. Jesus could come back in the next hour. Jesus could come back in the next five minutes. Jesus could come back tomorrow. That's called, and when I say Jesus coming back, I need to rephrase that because the Bible doesn't say during the rapture that Jesus is going to come back to the earth. The Bible says that he's going to, he calls it a catching away, and he refers to it as the saints being taken to heaven. That's what Jesus said was the rapture. So that has very little to do with the tribulation. The only, the only thing it really has to do with the fact is that once all the Christians are removed from this planet, that's only going to let the unbelievers here. So if the unbelievers are anything left here, it's probably going to be the start of the tribulation because there's not going to be any churches, there's not going to be the Holy Spirit, there's not going to be a lot going on. So... Um, so the, the rapture could trigger the tribulation, but, it, for, but these modern-day preachers who are preaching that you don't have to worry about the tribulation yet because there's no temple in Israel, don't buy that in a, a, at all because you need to study the Word of God and understand the difference between the rapture 
and the tribulation because they're two different things. And the Bible does a very, very extensive teaching on both of them. You just need to study to show yourself approved of God, rightly divided in the word of truth. So it's very, very important that we understand that you can't live in a life of iniquity. You can't live your life because Jesus taught us in the 12th chapter of uh, Roman that we need to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Your responsibility is to live a holy, righteous life as sinless as you possibly can. And Jesus knows that we need him as a personal savior, that we need to have a, a relationship with Jesus. And the Bible says that if you sin, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we sin, we confess our sins to Jesus who is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. But we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And that's why Jesus said there in, in that verse, he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Jesus went to a cross on Calvary to die, to pay for your sins. And he said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of you to give you power over sin. If Jesus lives inside of us and we are walking and talking and fellowshipping with Jesus, uh, he usually says when you're getting ready to sin, uh, maybe you shouldn't do that. That's not of me. I don't want you to do that there. And that's called conviction, isn't it? And that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus says, look, be led by the Holy Spirit. It says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they shall be called the sons of God, isn't it? And remember, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, isn't he? Old things are passed away. So we have many, many Bible verses that teach us that Jesus wants to be part of our lives, and therefore you won't ever hear Jesus say to you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Because see, we have lots of fun here on this earth, don't we? We have fun because we get to walk and talk with Jesus every day. We get to fellowship with Jesus. We get to spend time with Jesus. And um, we uh, know that if we keep Jesus first in everything that we do, and, uh, that Gee, he will be the Lord of our life. So we're going to jump back here a couple of verses here, and then we're going to um, finish up here. But I want to jump back to the fifth chapter of Matthew, the 16th verse. And uh, this kind of pertains to what we were talking about a little bit earlier. Jesus said in the 16th verse, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, once again, Jesus said, let the world see your good works. Let the world see the fruit that you have in your life. Let the world see the manifestation of the, of the Holy Spirit in your life. Does everybody remember in Galatians 5, we've studied it many, many times, it talks about the works of the flesh, doesn't it? And in Galatians 5, it says that if you do any, any of those things, uh, in Galatians 5, it says that if you're going to participate in the things of the world and commit adultery, commit fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, have a cell phone that you don't use for God's purpose, uh, watch TV for your own personal uh, luxury, uh, participate in witchcraft, hatred, variance, illumin wrath, strife, murder, envy, if you do any of these things, Jesus said, they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So Jesus has given us many, many warnings what he wants us to do and what he don't want us to do. So we don't have an excuse, but I know one thing, that if you keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, if Jesus is the Lord of your life, if you spend every wakening minute with Jesus, you won't have a problem because he'll be the Lord of your life, won't he? So we're going to conclude with, with this today. But remember that Jesus says that he wants us to have fruit. 
that abound towards everlasting life, doesn't he? And it's very, very important that we have Jesus as the Lord of our lives. And remember, the, the, the preachers of today, there's so many of them that are not preaching the true word of God. You won't hear a preacher on TV or wherever you go. You probably won't hear a teacher that tells you that Jesus said, depart from me. And yet Jesus recorded it right there in the book of Matthew, didn't he? So keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep praying. Get in that prayer closet as often as you can and let Jesus be the Lord of your life. Let's, cl let's close in prayer, brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that your word is, is meant to guide us, to lead us, to show us the way. Father, we pray that you speak to us in a special way. Father, this morning as Pastor Mike preached, he preached about the purpose that you've put inside of each one of us. Father, reveal your purpose to each one of us that we might be in your perfect will, that we might bring glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.